Good afternoon. Now, many of you come to church here regularly, and I know for a fact you can do better than that. Good afternoon. (laughs) Thank you, Dick. And all of you, it is such a joy to be able to be back in this beautiful building on this gorgeous afternoon. You all get extra kudos for coming with the weather so beautiful. Um, To talk about and learn about and celebrate together an incredibly important moment in the life of this church. We started hoping we could get a leg up on some of the restorative work that needed to be done on this building and set our trustees free to use their imagination and their talents, their gifts, and their expertise. And that's what we're going to be hearing about tonight. Again, thank you all for coming, and may this be a glorious night for all of us. Phil, would you like to come up, and we're going to have you kick us off by talking about the amazing work that is being started, being planned, and being visioned. Thank you, Karen. Thank you for coming. I uh, made a list of things because we've uh, been fortunate enough to get a lot of projects done here and we're looking forward to, to a lot more. Um, just to review what we have accomplished here in the past five years, a couple of fairly important things. Um, we've replaced, updated, and uh, put in a totally addressable alarm system, which makes the building safe. We replace all the red rugs. We've redone all of the hardwood flooring, which is about 4,000 square feet of hardwood flooring. That's a lot of hardwood flooring. Done a number of projects on the interior painting and a lot of outside painting at that time, um, excluding what we're working on now. We have gone 100% LED lighting throughout the church. Um, We put a new asphalt roof on the back of the church. The main part of the church has slate. You get that 150 or 200 years out of slate if you're good to it. Um, We've also installed a camera so we can do live streaming for those people who can't make it to the services. So that's some of the projects that we have completed. Um, This phase, we've got some money to work with. Um, We've got some projects started. One project that we have completed is is the replacement of the air conditioning unit for the offices and the chapel. I had Gary Vanderweil here looking at our air system last year during COVID, and we were walking through the building, and he looked at the air conditioning units, and he said, oh, those are end of life. (laughs) So we went to work on that, and we were fortunate enough to have some money to get going on that. So we've got a lot more to do, and as you can see, have seen that we've got some progress going on on the outside. The front of the church is being painted. Uh, dearly needed. The last time it was painted was by Hubert Vandeloot, and that was 1989, so it's been a while. It needs attention. Um, We're also working on a lot of the windows, which you will see a couple downstairs. We've got 10 of them installed, not completed yet. We still have a Palladian window to install. The new Palladian window is downstairs in Bates Hall. You're welcome to go up to it and touch it and look at it. Uh, It's fascinating. We found a great group of people that um, reproduced old windows, uh, framed the sashes, and they put antique glass in there so that it looks period. They've done a beautiful job with it. Um, And they are craftsmen. Their installation is is impeccable. It's fun to watch them work. They're kind of old school people, and that's what you need in an old building like this. We're also going to be looking at replacing the ramp door. The ramp door is the handicap ramp on the front side of the church. Um, It was a metal door was put in there at some point. Uh, It doesn't function well and it's rotting. And we'd like to get back to a more period door, something that's similar to the front, something that's heavy wood and has some windows in it so we can see before you uh, go pushing your uh, door into someone in a wheelchair. 
Also, uh, we're looking forward, and I know Karen is more than anybody, is updating the sound system. Apparently, we can't do one, <laughs> one microphone at a time. We can't do two microphones. And, you know, we've been told, we were told by one group that these speakers were adequate. Well, we had a complete review from a new company who does a lot of work in town and very reputable, and, and it's time to update everything. The speakers are something like 30, 35 years old, so the new technology says that we can do a lot better. We can, uh, we can make it easier for people to hear. We can attach the sound systems to those hard, hard of hearing that want to wear, wear a device. And we can run a number of microphones, and we can also have a very high-quality microphone for a reasonable cost to record some of this beautiful music that Jim brings to us so often. So it's, it's really good stuff. Um, you know, this, this building is huge, and it's very old. It is 19, 1824. It is 50 years older than the town hall, and it need, needs upkeep. And when you don't do something to it every year, it can fall apart. We're fortunate that the era that it was built in was built by high, highly craftsmen people, some of them shipwrights that knew what they're doing. And, you know, to look at the main structure of this, it, it doesn't look old. It's in really, really good shape, and it's really well built, you know, um, I can't say enough about the craftsmanship that was put into this building originally. That's what keeps it going so well. So it is really our duty to maintain, keep up, and try to get the building so it'll be good for another 150 years or 200 years. Uh, these windows were, were a big project. Um, when we looked at the redoing windows five years ago, we thought we were going to take them out, have them refurbished, and put them back in. Well, we were for very fortunate to have someone like Paul Harrison get on the trustees. And Paul is a, uh, worked in a joinery shop. So when he came on the trustees, he says, Phil, what about replacing the windows with new windows? I'm like, who does that? And so he went on a trek and he found the Cooper Group down in Connecticut. And uh, they came up, looked at them, gave us some prices. And what they have produced and installed is just fabulous. So it's very thankful for Paul. Paul's going to be down there uh, near the Palladium window to talk about windows if you have any interest at all. But to see how, how well they are put together is just, it, it's very rewarding to, to know that what we're going to be putting into the church is going to last a long, long time. I mean, you know, every time you look around in a, in a big old building like this, you see something that you, you wish you could uh, update, if you will. Um, and that there are a lot of a lot of, uh, lot of things going on in this building. I think we're fortunate there's nothing right now that is hurting it structurally. But, I mean, you have to look at, like, windows like these that have been here for, you know, since it, well, these have probably been replaced in 1928, so they're just almost 100 years old. But they don't seal properly. They don't open properly. Um, I think, what, a, six out of eight of them do open. Um, that's one of our next projects is the same group that built the window is going to take these lower sashes out. They're going to take those sashes back to their shop, take the glass out, strip them down completely, uh, rejuvenate the wood if it's needed, fill if there's any rot, and then put the glass back in, paint them to, so that they look like new, reinstall them with weather stripping, and they'll make them function, all function easily, which is something important when we needed to uh, ventilate the, the, the hall for for COVID, but it's always nice in the summertime to, to be able to open them. So, uh, you know, beyond that, yeah, you will walk around the back of the church. There's, there's some peeling paint again off of that that section, and some pieces off the side that are that are going. Um, are there more projects? There's a lot of projects. Um, what's that? Yeah, yeah. The ceiling needs to be painted. The walls need to be painted. Um, the floors, uh, you know, this tile's been here, I think, since the early 50s. And some of it has become a tripping hazard. Some of it's curled up. So, you know, we're, we're going to be pricing out the floor replacement here. And we're getting a price um, on the ceiling of this as well. So, um, you know, 
the, the list is just almost endless, but um, just want to thank you all for the support because there's, on the other side of this, if you're on trustees and you're responsible for an old building and maintaining it, and you look at it, you make yourself a list, you make that list in a sequence that shows priorities at the top of the list, and then you look at how do you pay for it. Well, often what happens is you don't have the funds to do anything. So you, meet, you may meet month after month and say, oh, this is nice, this needs to be done, but we can't afford it. So that list stays there, and that list can get longer. So we're whittling away at that list at this point, and we'd like to get through the list. We'd like to get, look at some of the things that are more hopeful that we don't have as priorities so that we can make it a building that will last for a long, long time. Thank you. You all called together a steering committee for this capital campaign, and you could not have identified more capable, more caring, or more committed people to be part of that. And Jeff Nosnagel will be the spokesperson for that committee to tell you a little bit about the work that they've been doing through the course of this whole summer. Good afternoon, everybody. That's better. Uh, Phil, thank you uh, for all you've done, as well as for, for this talk you just gave. Um, our trustees have done amazing work over the years on very tight budgets. Uh, Phil slightly alluded to that, but double underline that. They've just been amazing. Um, leading up to the list of the most critical projects, totaling 250,000, but as Phil said, there's many more that still need to be done. I'm spokesperson for the Capital Campaign Committee. Our team members are all here. Ruth Nedro is maybe still downstairs. Uh, Pastor Karen, our great leader uh, on all things, including the Capital Campaign. Uh, Paul Carlson, John Campbell, if you guys would wave. Uh, thank you. Uh, and Rick Hielmeyer. We, as Karen said, we have a wonderful group and it's been fun for all of us to work together and really do teamwork. Great brainstorming. Everybody had uh, great ideas and what came together was really a work of all the people on the committee. We've been working since well, the beginning of July on this campaign called Building for Our Second 200 Years. Um, and that's what it's about, 200 years. Our goal appropriately matches that. It's 200,000 plus the 50-50 match of 50,000 from the, camp, the, uh, the community preservation grant from the town. And the purpose is to preserve and prepare our building for the next 200 years. We've had very positive early responses from the CPC, obviously with recommending to the town that uh, matching grant, the historical commissions and neighbors, including several of whom said, I will donate to that. Their primary question as we were talking with them was, is 250,000 enough just for these critical projects? We hope so. Today, as we launch our campaign, we're amazed at how far we've come, as Bill pointed out, with continued great responses and support from our congregation and our fellow townspeople. We are grateful and thank those who have already pledged their support. Your enthusiasm is contagious and it's helped all of us as we're working on this. Uh, with this early support, we've accomplished quite a bit. As Phil pointed out, you can already see the progress. Scraping and priming on the front of the building, the facade, some of the windows on the front have been replaced already. And you can see the beautiful and strong palladium window replacement. And I emphasize strong. Uh, for those uh, that uh, may not be aware, that's the big arched window. And when we were having a tour for the, uh, the commissions, uh, Phil was pointing to the window and he kind of went this way in the middle 
and pulled it back, and the distance was three or four inches. And all of us breathed a sigh of relief when it came back and stayed there. <laughs> it is down below for you to see. It's absolutely beautiful. And uh, Paul and Phil will be uh, happy to fill in details for you on that. <clears throat> That's waiting to be installed, and we think it's going to be installed this week. So that's going to be really exciting within the next week or so. So we hope, with your help this afternoon, to raise enough money to complete the most critical projects listed in the brochures, and not just parts of them, um, like painting only the front of the church, uh, updating only the windows in the front of the church. With your generous pledges of support today, we hope that we can go beyond the most critical projects, take advantage of cost efficiencies, maybe we could even have funds to meet unknown surprise future needs. Um, that would be called preparing for Murphy's Law. And we all know Murphy's Law is real law. So let me close by repeating, thank you all for your support ongoing support for this beautiful, historic church of ours. Thank you very much, Pastor Karen. In February, we tried, we looked at a possible grant to help us begin to do some of the much needed work that has been described for you tonight. And in the process, we determined that if we were going to get support, we were going to need to look close to home. And the first place to look was obviously the CPC. And this church committed to matching funds so that we could make a request to the town to support us for this building project. And they did that. And in the process, the enthusiasm and the recognition of all the work that needed to be done was increasingly palpable. And the Finance Committee met and said, if we are going to do, as Jeff described, not just bits, but projects, we need to find a way to augment the monies that we've already secured. And finance brought to, cap to a church committee a proposal for a capital campaign. And church committee said, this isn't a decision that we want to make on our own. So there was an information meeting that Sunday, chairs of the various boards and committees polled their leadership teams. That information was collected and came back to church committee for a special meeting that was held the following Tuesday. That's a week and two days, guys. And you voted a $200,000 capital campaign with a presented funding plan so that we could begin to do the work that needed to be done to preserve this beautiful building. And frankly, as your pastor, to rebuild some of not only the confidence but the enthusiasm of doing a project together that is meaningful and lasting and important. And coming out of that, you convened the steering committee for the capital campaign, and they met every single week to bring us to today. We have spoken to many in the congregation and in the community about what we're doing We've also done our best to keep you as those who are closest in apprised of what's going on because we need you to be ambassadors for this work too. And by all accounts, that's working. The responses that we have gotten to saying this is what we're going to do on this beautiful historic common to keep the integrity of the historical construction, to make it safe, to make it sound and to make it sustainable. So we come to this night about to hear amazing music, celebrating the fact that we can do this together. And there are so many beyond who are, are 
in this room right now who are part of this, who are standing behind this very good work. And I'm going to issue a challenge. And it's a challenge I issue with a huge smile on my face. From this point in our campaign, standing at the point of our public launch, may we together begin the good work of raising the next hundred thousand dollars. When you come downstairs following the concert, there are materials. There's also some beautiful pictures that show just what a, a heritage we have in this building. There are also members of the steering committee for the capital campaign and of the trustees. Ask questions. If you have people you want to tell about this project, we have additional packets. But most of all, give yourselves a hand because this is something you are making happen and you have every reason to be very proud. <laughs>